Hello and welcome to this week's Paratech webinar. Uh, this week is on the hydrofusion strut. My name is Mike Uliberry. I'm the Western Regional Sales Manager. The rest of the Paratech team is on board today. They are behind the scenes in the Q&A section. So throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and use the Q&A section off on the right side of your screen there. Uh, be patient with them because none of them have worked at a 911 dispatch center, so their typing is not super fast, but they will reply and answer to you. And if your answer is a, a private message, it will go back in my questions. If it is published, then it will go into the featured section and you'll be able to see the answers in there to any other questions that come up. The upcoming webinars and the ones we've had in the past uh, are shown right here. Today, like I said, is the hydrofusion strut. Uh, next week will be the highway stabilization kit. After that will be the interstate kit and then the heavy vehicle kit followed up in this series with the strut driver. Paratech has a long history of providing uh, excellent rescue equipment to the fire service and first responders. Some of those have become what I would consider in my career some game changers. Um, and one of those would be the hydrofusion strut that we'll talk about today. A couple years later after that came out the multi-force bag, which you've seen those webinars on. And then the year after that in 2016 came out with the VSK controller. And that is another very valuable piece of equipment that we have, especially in dealing with the heavy lift world. This PowerPoint presentation is for informational purposes only. It's not a substitute for any hands-on training ta taught by a qualified instructor. Regular hands-on training is necessary to become proficient in these skills. Improper use of the equipment can cause serious injury or death. So think safe, act safe, be safe, and always lift an inch and support an inch, meaning lift an inch, either use cribbing or strut. The hydrofusion strut kit gives us the ability to lift up to 10 tons with a two to one safety factor or 20 tons with a one to one safety factor. When the collar is in, down in the lock position, it gives us the same 20,000 four to one safety factor that we see in our Acme thread struts at four feet and under and our longshore strut at eight feet and under. A unique feature on the top of this strut is the dual shaft end adapter and that allows so that the non-moving end of the strut or an extension with either the Acme thread or the longshore struts can fit in and have a positive connection. The hydrofusions come in three different sizes, meaning how much lift or thread throw that you have within the shaft of that. And that comes in four inch lift, a 10 inch lift, and the hydrofusion 16. When you look at the hydrofusion strut, it appears similar in size to the longshore. And that's because it is the same 3.5 inch diameter strut. However, some of the differences you'll note would be it is not manually adjustable and there's no male air nipple on there to be used uh, as we would with uh, in a trench area or in chasing a load that we'll go over today. And that could be used in conjunction with the hydrofusion strut in a lift or with the airbags. This is a hydraulic strut and you can see on the side the swivel connector that it has and it is to, meant to be used in conjunction with the hydraulic pump. The hydrofusion pump is a two-stage pump. It has a permanent swivel connected 10-foot hose on it. The handle is kept in place with just a metal clip, makes it easy to lock and unlock that and be able to carry it by. And it has a protected gauge on there. The gauge shows a 10,000 PSI gauge. One of the rule of thumbs that I like to use with this is that if I look at uh, as I'm doing a lift, I can look at the gauge. If I double the number that is shown on the gauge reading, then that is roughly the amount of weight that is on that hydrofusion strut. Similar to a rule of thumb that we've uh, talked about when we did the maxi force bag, and that would be by guesstimating the square inches of surface area contact and multiplying that by the PSI shown in the dual dead man to give us an idea of what weight would be on that airbag. 
Some of the things I like to cover when we first are doing like a, an in-service and some training on a hydrofusion is to start with this. And if you look on the pump on the side here, you see this uh, finger knob. And to twist that all the way to the counterclockwise position puts it the pump in the open position. So that is the position I want it in all the way counterclockwise when I am making my connection or my disconnection of the pump to the strut. Once I've made that connection and I'm ready to use the pump and make a lift, then I need to turn that knob all the way clockwise and just make sure it's finger tight. You do not have to really crank on that at all. So that is one of the things that's important. Just make sure that it is in all the way counterclockwise to connect and disconnect, all the way clockwise, finger tight when you're going to do your lift. Another thing, and you might have noticed the, the tape around that handle in the last picture, but you can see in here I have some red electrical tape just below the base of the collar. And then again on the handle there. If we've lowered our hydrofusion struts back down to put them away, and if somebody had the collar set part way down and thought it was all the way down and then made their disconnect, as they've set those back on a tarp or went to load them back on the rescue, then they're still going to have fluid in one of the struts. If you don't have them labeled out, you kind of have a 50 50 shot on guessing which pump went to that hydrofusion strut during that evolution or incident. And, and if you guess wrong, then one of the pumps is not going to have enough fluid to perform properly, and the other one is going to have too much and probably start leaking. So uh, get some colored electrical tape, put that on. So I always know, like, this is my red set, I have a green set on my truck as well and I keep them together that way. You could label it any way that makes sense for you. You could put pump one, strut one, pump two, strut two, however you want to do it, but I would recommend labeling them so that if you run into that situation where it has been disconnected without fully seating the strut back down and getting the fluid from that strut back into the pump, you have a way to identify it. The next few slides have some accessories that are used most commonly with the hydrofusion strut. So the first one on the left would be the strut converter, and that is a, a basically a double male adapter, and that allows us to put this right into the hydrofusion and then put a base on top. So uh, in a scenario similar to like doing a direct frame lift uh, on a commercial vehicle. If you find yourself in a scenario uh, for some reason where you have to add a strut to get the height you need for an insertion point to do your lift, and for whatever reason, you need to turn the strut uh, upside down or the thread side down, if you will. Um, then you would need this Acme thread screw adapter. And it also comes in gold for the longshore strut. And then that would be where you would flip it upside down because the point is so high, you wouldn't be able to reach the collar otherwise. But then once that collar is set, you would not be able to adjust it again because the weight would be on that and the only adjustable collar at that point is still the one on the hydrofusion as you perform your lift. The next picture is the contour base that has really become my go-to um, for doing lifts, especially uh, doing a direct frame lift and even on my support or my chasing struts. Um, this one has become the one that has, has really proved itself to me. The final picture on the right is the multi-chain base, and this has become useful when if we can't do a direct frame lift and we have to do some outside rigging with some chain uh, to the frame, then this one ha it has the ability it, it, in usual in the past when you have chain that you put in one of the bases, we always end up with like a link or two that ends up having slack that we just can't get out of it. This base is unique because I can put it up against the object I'm either supporting or lifting. I can lift that chain up through the center of it and drop it in the channel that it has. And I usually am able to take that out. So when I start, I have a full positive uh, connection and tension on that chain. It also accepts 3 8 chain, but it also does half inch round and half inch flat. Another accessory that I mentioned that we use uh, doing lifts would be our VSK controller. 
and this allows us to have our support struts or our chasing struts in play and somebody doesn't have to hold that strut against that object and spin the collar trying to keep up with the lift as they're going. This makes that operation much safer, especially in the heavy lift world. So all I do, you, you notice there are three female uh, couplings on this. One is the inlet side, and then the two are the outlet side that would go to my chasing struts. This in essence is a built-in Y, so you would need to make sure that they are both um, connected to hose or have a shutoff on one if you were going to daisy chain in some fashion um, or air would leak out of that. It has a simple on and off quarter turn knob and this can be set with your uh, regulator out of your master control kit and I can set the pressure on this at anything from 50 to 250 and it regulates it down and will vent at 25 psi. So it's just enough pressure to take place of the human hand holding that strut in play. And then as I lift an inch, whether it be with the hydrofusion or an airbag, I can simply twist the collar down an inch on my support or chasing struts to maintain that positive connection. So if something did shift or move, I still have my struts in place to capture that load. Another accessory that you'll see in a lot of big rig classes would be the glad hands that are used in conjunction with some Paratech air set out of a master control kit. And this would be if we could go to the tractor of the rig and set the brake, um, but if, if that has been damaged in the collision or we want to have positive control of that while we are doing a, a lift and getting the commercial vehicle off of um, our victims in a passenger vehicle, then this is a positive way to take control of the air functions of that vehicle. So if I hook those in, obviously with the red line, I would want to bleed the air off so that I set the brakes. But on the blue line, I might want to add air to that so that I could have control if I want to do possibly a different uh, function in conjunction with either airbags or lifting. Maybe I want to release the pins on the rear axles and do a bogey slide. They don't want to take over control to the air ride suspension system and add some air to those in conjunction with say a daisy chain uh, maxi force lift but all this goes hand in hand in the heavy lift program some of the applications that you could use the hydrofusion in these are some of them that i've outlined that we'll talk about today an override or an underride where we have passenger vehicle under a commercial vehicle a train versus a pedestrian uh, a train simple uh, derail rerail situation, shifting of a load, structure collapse, and vehicle stabilization with a secondary limb entrapment. All these pictures that I have coming up are from training evolutions that I have done in my territory, and they have been with the training companies of Blue Collar Training Network, Spec Rescue, and Rescue 4. So I would highly recommend that if you have the opportunity to attend some of these courses that you get signed up and uh, get your hands on these pieces of equipment so that you are uh, familiar with them and ready to use them when you're called upon. Uh, angle and weights. I know many of you have seen this before. Uh, I've seen a lot of these, the strut multiplier chart on the left, printed and laminated and carried in rigs. Um, the other picture is on the right. And that is from Rec Masters, and that just goes over the weights of everything from a passenger vehicle to a commercial vehicle, which can be very useful uh, during your size up on an incident. The override underride scenario, uh, the first two pictures on the left, they've been talked about in the previous webinars. And during your size up and your walk around and you're doing your weight calculation on what that commercial vehicle would weigh, and you're picking your equipment that you're gonna need to perform that rescue. The stop the crush strut comes in there uh, uh, very first. And you can see in the two left pictures, you can see a stop the crush right next to that passenger vehicle. And then in the next picture, just right up underneath the frame of the one that's on the override. This is so that any of the next steps we take, we ensure that we don't lower that commercial vehicle down further onto the passenger vehicle. And the next steps would be like to secure and capture that suspension. And that would be the front and rear axles of that passenger vehicle. And you can see the ratchet straps that are in play on that picture on the left. 
they're a little harder to see on the right, but I would make sure that you capture suspension both front and rear. After that, we put in our lifting and our stabilization struts. So for heavy lift, those struts at 60 to 80 degrees, and then our chasing struts in play. And you can see here, most of these lifts are done now with, uh, we're lifting low direct frame and we're chasing right next to our lifting struts. I'm not saying you won't ever find yourself in a scenario where you have to say lift low and maybe chase high or, or vice versa or whatever, but um, this has become very popular and stable uh, doing a heavy lift on a commercial vehicle. This next one, just another example of an underride, making sure that we've got our stop the crush strut in. We've captured the suspension you can see on the left. And then this is an example where we have our lifting strut in play on the frame. And you can see that what they've done here is they've put a, an Acme thread extension in play with the, with the uh, strut converter and then a base, but there were no, there's no room between the front of that vehicle and the axle to put a chasing strut uh, or supporting strut as well. So they rigged chain to the frame and brought that on the outside of it and used the multi-chain base right there. And you can see that it does have air hook connected to it to a VSK controller. One thing I want to mention on here, if you look at the picture on the left where I have the blue arrow pointing down at the firefighter that is on one knee with that pump, it is critical that the two pump operators can see each other and that way they can make sure that they are they're doing the pumps at the same time so that you don't start to dog walk that load up especially as you start to take the full load onto the hydrofusion strut a um, lot of methods are out there you might see people kind of move their arms up and down like a bird or they'll yell out you know pump or whatever uh, the way I like to do it is they can see each other, start with the handles in the up position, and then do about 10 pumps, take a pause at that point. That's almost an inch of lift. It's a good time to evaluate how the lift's going and set the collar on your lifting strut and your chasing strut. The picture on the left here, there was no good, just from how this vehicle was constructed on this tanker, there was no good positions to put um, struts directly underneath it to do a direct frame lift. So four separate chains were used to wrap the frame to give to a lifting strut that you see has an Acme thread um, strut in there with a multi-base. And then the chasing strut is the gold longshore strut with the, the multi-chain base on it. And this way we were able to do a lift and chase it, but still have positive connection to the frame of the commercial vehicle. The picture on the right, in this override scenario, there were stop the crush struts, the suspension was captured, and you can see the struts underneath it for the lift and the chase. One thing that's very critical is if you, if you uh, think about it, as the commercial vehicle is going down the street, it has balance and equilibrium. The center of gravity has been designed to be over the wheels and the axle and the stabilization. But when that's involved in a collision and it comes to rest on a passenger vehicle, now the center of gravity has changed. We really don't know where that is until we start to do a lift and we get the full load onto our hydrofusion struts. At that point, we might see the load start to shift a little bit to find its equilibrium again, its center of gravity. This is why we would put a tie back in on each side and a grip hoist is a great tool that can do that. It has plenty of strength for that lateral movement, but it also can be just adjusted to the millimeter, whether I need to take that load in or out to create the balance, to maintain the good angle that I took time to set up with my lifting and my stabilization struts. Another thing that uh, has been uh, extremely beneficial for the fire service has been with all those training companies I mentioned utilization of the tow industry these guys have a lot of good training and background through rec masters and when these guys show up with a heavy uh, rig or a rotator then they are a great asset to us to help us finish a lift or stabilize a load uh, when they get on scene with us so I would recommend um, 
again, with uh, like blue collar spec and rescue for all those courses typically involve uh, the tow industry and they are good to, to use in your training and on scene so that you know what uh, the capabilities are for both because they are going to come once you if you did perform a lift and have it done and the and the passenger vehicle pulled out performed extrication got your patients out that commercial vehicle is still hung up in the air there with your hydrofusions your chasing struts and your tie backs these guys are going to come in and rig that lift it a couple inches so that you can retrieve your equipment making connection to the to the D-ring on our 12 inch base plate always comes up and particularly with heavy lift. Um, there are a few things I just want to cover on this. So working with some SMEs in the tow industry, the chain industry and instructors from the companies I mentioned as well as our paratech team. Um, we found that pretty much in the fire service we're all trained about the same way when it comes to chain. And that would be we have 20 foot sections of chain that have grab hooks on each end and we are trained to put those uh, around an object and and as long as that grab hook is hooked back through a link a chain then we feel like we've we've done our job and we've made the proper connection as far as the grab hook into the link of chain is concerned yes that's correct we have but one thing we're not taking into consideration is that d to d ratio when it comes to rigging it would chain and that would be the diameter of the chain to the diameter of what we're wrapping it around and we run that through the d-ring on that 12 inch base plate handle and hook it back on itself we are in essence just side loading one link of that chain and that is a 60 percent deduction of the chain rating the other way we see it connected would be in the third picture over you can see that the grab hook is just going directly onto the d-ring handle and it just happens to fit almost perfect, but that still is a 10% deduction in the rating of our chain. So working with everybody as a team, we came up with some ideas that would perform a positive connection to the D-ring uh, handle and give us the full rating of our chain across that tension buttress. So on the left picture, those three uh, that you see there, really the center one and the one on the right have become, uh, really they've proven themselves through training that those are the uh, good way to go. And what you have on there is 100 grade chain with compatible components on it uh, of equal or greater strength. And they have a locking slip hook on the one end to go into the D-ring handle and then a grab hook on the other. So you can use that locking slip hook on each D-ring handle, throw your chain underneath, um, hook it with the grab hooks, slide your base plates out into the proper angle, and then have 100% strength of the 8,800 pounds for your grade 100 chain on that connection point. The Paratech team has also been working uh, on coming up with a rule of thumb, just a suggestion or a guideline to go with uh, that strut multiplier page. So maybe you could print this on the back side as we come out with this and laminate that and have these as rule of thumb and just some guidelines for a quick reference on scene. So with the passenger vehicle, one ratchet strap or some pickets will be sufficient there. And then in light commercial vehicles, we're suggesting two opposing ratchet straps and then anything above that in the heavy vehicle range would be 3 8 grade 100 chain with those equivalent connections that I just covered. Uh, this picture, we're moving into the train uh, world now. This was done with LA City Fire Department and at Union Station. And first off, what I'd like to say is just uh, LA City hosted our Paratech University last year. Uh, I have done a lot of work with them with Paratech and with FEMA USAR and deployments and training. Um, always a class act and have helped me and my family out personally when my daughter lived in Southern California. And their family to us, I'd like you to keep them in your prayers for those that were injured on the fire on Saturday. This uh, train lift we did with uh, ADH crew over at Union Station downtown. On this Metro link, uh, this one was being replaced with some new locomotives. This one weighed approximately 285,000 pounds. 
we did several lifts this day uh, on this locomotive. Um, we did a daisy chain, a three bag, multi-force bag lift, uh, and that brought it off the track. And then we did a hydrofusion lift uh, with four struts and chasing struts in place as well. And we we're able to lift it off the track. We got it up enough that the Metrolink reps wanted us to put it back down because the flange was coming up so high off of the rail. Um, but it was very effective. Uh, you can see in the picture on the left, back to their rescue, they have uh, anchored off uh, grip hoist. And this is because we did start to get some lateral movements where we wanted to hold it in play um, and keep it in line with the rails. Another train lift, uh, an example of lifting and shifting uh, of a load. This is a construction style train that's used in the uh, Bay Area Tunnel Project up in NorCal. And this is, uh, they, they uh, had concern on if the train derailed and if they could re-rail it before they needed to get out of there so the BART system could run as well as if somebody, uh, one of the workers was uh, hit by it, if they could get it off of them. So we did several lifts uh, in the multi-force webinar. You saw the lift and shift um, with that. And then we also did a lift and shift with the hydrofusion strut and the pitcher on the right. Pitcher on the left, you see two hydrofusions doing the lift and we were able to uh, derail and re-rail it simply by having our struts at an angle that you see there and then letting the pressure off of one and uh, adjusting that load so that it would move over and then uh, able to lift it back up and adjust the pressure in the other strut and lower it back down onto the rails. In structure collapse, this picture comes out of Puget Sound, uh, February of this year, the tree that fell. Uh, onto an apartment building with a victim, and they were able to use um, struts, hydrofusions in play uh, to assist them on that incident. In the vehicle stabilization world, I know some rescue companies carry them and use them as their stabilization in case they do have a secondary limb entrapment. These are some examples of having stabilization in play and hydrofusion on a side resting. And the same image is mirrored on that side resting vehicle on the dirty side. On this roof resting vehicle, you can see they utilize chain and they have a ratchet strap coming underneath the dirty side across the axle to hold the chain in play, but able to do a lift enough to be able to take the weight off of the roof so that they could perform uh, an extrication and a roof removal. Some of the questions we get asked uh, on care and maintenance uh, or just troubleshooting on a hydrofusion. Always make sure that you keep the caps protected and, and drive from dirt and debris so that you don't uh, get any of that inside when you make the connection on the coupling and pump that into the strut or get it in the pump. But the air in the system, and that is if you're, if you're uh, using your hydrofusion and you notice that say one of them, maybe you have to pump it twice as much to get the same uh, distance of lift, then you probably have some air in that system. And it is, it's a simple fix. All you have to do is place the hydrofusion on the ground upside down, just put it on the bay floor, put your pump up on the workbench, make your connection with the pump in the counterclockwise position, turn it to the clockwise position, and then go ahead and start to pump uh, and fill the fluid into the hydrofusion strut. Once you have uh, extended that strut all the way. Go ahead and give it a few extra pumps to build some pressure in the system and then let that sit there for a few minutes. Once you're done, turn the uh, pump valve to the counterclockwise position, release the fluid back into the pump. That should push the air back up into the pump from the strut and then you can simply turn that pump up on its edge, crack the fill cap and just burp the air out of it. I do mine in my truck probably quarterly just from driving and the, the amount of use that they get. Um, just from driving around and bumping down the road in the rig, they'll tend to get some uh, air bubbles in them sometimes. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you do have to replace some oil, only use the approved Paratech oil to protect the seals in the pump. That link at the bottom of this uh, gives you the hydrofusion strut manual if you uh, have any further questions. And as well, ask questions online to the rest of the Paratech team um, and they will get back with you on those. 
thank you for attending today's uh, webinar. Appreciate you taking time out of your day to uh, be here with us. We're looking forward to the time as uh, restrictions lift that we can get back out and be with you and do training and uh, see you all again. Until then, go ahead, stay safe, uh, take care of each other. And uh, again, thank you for taking your time to uh, participate in today's webinar. Goodbye.